not easy. No wonder an increasingly popular option is to opt out of this family industry altogether, tear up the contracts. And all the signs are that many women in their 20s are doing just that. Marriage rates are going down. The birth rate is at its lowest in 40 years. With the image of their mother's lives looming over their shoulders, young women are looking at the family industry and considering going on strike. Well, my mum was very financially uh, dependent on my father for many years, and I look at that and think, well, that must have affected the choices that she made. Um, and she had, like, five kids, so... And that was quite early on in life. So that also restricted her, and I, I don't want those sorts of restrictions. She was 18, met my father, who lived across the road. Um, she met him, married him, um, and then and then God both and multiplied. And as I said, I was one of six. Um, as a result, obviously, she, she was kept very much in the sort of land of domesticity, in the house, looking after all of us as my father walked away two weeks away, two weeks back. Um, to me, that seems like absolute hell, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it's not what I want. We have experience of other people, like older women, who say haven't had kids, and they're perfectly happy. It's not seen as the be-all and the end-all these days. It's, it's not as important, it's not the priority it used to be. It doesn't necessarily provide the security it once was expected to. Mm. But haven't we heard all this before? In the 60s, a lot of women said that they were going to hold out for independence, but, well, it didn't really come to much, did it? You're quite right to say that young women in the 60s might have said, oh, I want to be independent and I want this, that and the other, but that those battles now um, don't seem to have been won for them. But in fact, what's actually happened is that they've bequeathed to the generation of women in their 20s enormous progress so that younger women today are entering a labour market in which there are more, more women in the labour market than there ever have been, um, more women in, in full-time jobs, more working mothers who are working full-time. So they have a whole host of role models who have actually broken through. Work has been incredibly liberating for women. It's given them economic independence. And this generation of women know that. 90% of women in this generation have educational qualifications, whereas only 50% of their mothers did. This generation of women also have more earning power than any that has gone before. Both these things effectively mean that the price they pay for having children goes up. They've got more to lose. In our survey, we asked young women what they would most regret not having done by the end of their lives. Having children came fifth on the list after career, travel, relationships and money. Having children came before sex, which was unusual, but then this generation is very different. It would be useful to have a man to change the nappies and do the cooking and all that sort of thing. I definitely wouldn't be marrying anyone who was thinking that I was going to make them brekkie in the morning. Everything has to be shared, basically. Um, all the housework, everything needs to be shared. And if, I, if the partner I'm with is not willing to share that and help me pursue my interests, then I'm not going to be happy. The brutal realities of family life may hit these young women in years to come, but maybe they'll succeed in making the couples of the future into caring, sharing equals. You were made for me. He works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we each bring in half the money. On weekends, we share all the chores. His. His. Mine. Mine. And we share looking after this one too. Thanks to maternity leave, paternity leave, flexible working, job shares, parental sick leave, But despite all this, we've really hung on to our individual identities and are free to develop into fully rounded human beings. You were made, you were made, you were made for me. The truly equal relationship has always been promoted as the ideal by educated middle-class feminists. What's changed is how widespread that ideal has now become amongst women of all classes. 
Well, one of the most interesting things that we found actually in our research to some extent was that it was working class women whose values had changed most dramatically and actually that um, working class women were actually outstripping the men, their male peers in their commitment to success at work, in their willingness to take risks and so on, which is quite interesting because in a sense I think we often think that as it were feminist values are values that higher educated women basically have. We don't see it as rippling down to to um, people who are, uh, come from a working class background. But the most dramatic change seems to have been amongst those working class communities. It's at the lower paid end of the job market that women have been finding more work, while men have been finding less. This is pioneering a very different type of family wife went out to work because she was better qualified than me so I thought right well I'll stay at home and watch the babies because well we only have one then right so I said right it's a good idea this and uh, it worked out ever since I've been doing it ever since now when Morgan was a baby I, I was a guard on the underground and uh, the, the money was terrible and the shifts weren't very good and my partner had um, just started in a, a, a well-paid job and she'd worked hard to get that off the ground, so it made sense for her to carry on working and for me to sit at home. These men are the first of a new breed. They're still quite rare, but if you keep your eyes open, you can spot them waiting outside the school gates at home time, flashing past with a trolley in Tesco's, or playing Pocahontas in the park. Men and women are playing a swings and roundabouts game, and it's hard for men to adjust to the lower status that goes with being the one at home. The problem is, men and women both now have the breadwinner mentality and families don't fit in easily with that. In real life, families always involve someone giving something up. But self-sacrifice is rather looked down on now. We're all supposed to be out there achieving in the big wide world. We tend to overlook the rewards that family life brings. Rewards that are new to many men. Watching him grow up day by day. Um... Watching him, hearing him say his first words, taking his first step. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's just been a, it's just been a joy. The bad bits are um, ironing, washing up, changing the nappies, which isn't that bad. Um, there's the good bits outweigh the bad bits by miles, absolutely miles. I, I didn't know ma men were supposed to feel like this about children. I didn't really uh, appreciate the extent of it until I was um, at toddler group uh, one day and there was a couple of the women there who just had new babies. And uh, I picked up one of the new babies and gave it a cuddle. And I was quite surprised by the intensity of the sort of emotional reaction I had to the, the baby, you know, quite a strong maternal feeling and I think that's sort of, that's built up in me through uh, through caring for the children and I do I don't know I find <laughs> I do really enjoy it you know I find it it's just lovely I mean some of the things that the children say to me are, are just great you know. some people are more suited to childcare than others in the truly flexible family who looks after the kids won't be down to gender Baby don't care for Neil Hibbert of Hyde in Cheshire thinks this job has a lot going for it, despite what women say. I do all the cooking, the cleaning, the washing, ironing. It suits both of us. I enjoy being at home. There's a lot of freedom involved in it. I can go off and do what I want to, when I want to, really. Some that you talk to at school, eh? Hey? When I've said, oh, there's, there's not that much to, to run in the house as such like that, it's, if you keep on top of everything, it doesn't take you long to get everything done. I have seen the future. And he works.